We have said it before and we'll say it again. There's no shortage of mouth watering food in Malaysia, especially in Ipoh, which is one of the largest city in the country. Nice and juicy, really refreshing, crunchy. It's fried chicken already has so much flavor. You can even see that the spices have penetrated into the meat. Join us as we uncover what this colorful and vibrant city has to offer. It feels really good. It's really good. Definitely, this is the one that dates back to 1937. Say might be the oldest one. P.S. Don't forget to grab some snack. You might get hungry. In Ipoh, we must get white coffee, and the best place to get it is where it's originated from. The Sun Yuan Long. I really don't know how to say it. It's still early in the morning. Haven't had anything yet, so that's it. Apparently, this is the place where Ipo white coffee originated from. I'm so excited to have it. We also got it with kaya toast, but our kaya toast is not here yet. So for now, we're getting coffee. Oh, we get the iced and hot. Ooh, here's a toast. <laughs> coffee cheers. If you're in Ipo, you gotta have Ipo white coffee. So they call it white coffee. The beans are actually roasted in margarine. Clearly, it's not white. Oh, if you look at it in the light, it could have a little bit of that. But I ordered it hot. Jumi has the ice. Nice strong flavor here. A little bit of the milk, but I like how it's more strong than milky. Slightly sweet, but really good. The traditional mug and saucer they put it in. It's really good. Definitely, this is the one that dates back to 1937. Say it might be the oldest one. Uh, definitely wanted to come here first to try a first taste of Ipoh White Coffee. Definitely an iconic drink here. We also got our roti talor, the bread with these beautiful half-boiled eggs and butter. Third way to start your day is white coffee, eggs with toast, and kaya toast. Classic. Here at Chuan Fat Place, it's very old school. about this spot is that Ipo in general is very popular for dry curry meat. So that's what we got. We got it with actually two different types of noodles. We got it with the kwe tiao, the flat rice noodle. We also got it with the, the yellow meat. And what we really like about this place, you can also order fried meats on the side. So they have chicken wing and they also have pork, fried pork. And they give you this bowl of curry to go with it. So not only do you have the curry and the curry meat, you also have this dipping sauce on the side. First try the curry, we mix it up. It has the sweet soy sauce and the curry paste. Also has some talgi, you know, if you're an Ipo, what's a place to Ipo without talgi, right? You gotta have as much talgi as possible. Got a nice spicy kick to that curry. It balances out well with the dark soy sauce too. I'm gonna go in for some of this fried chicken. The fried chicken wings here are all chopped up. The auntie's hacking it up on the on the wooden block with a big meat cleaver. Try it by by itself first. Mm -hmm. Nice flavor on its own, but you know it's gonna be taken to the next level with this curry. So let's take give it a shot. Curry's so good. Every piece of this fried pork as well. Fried pork's still juicy, has a little bit of that five spice flavor to it. It's got that nice crispy coating on the outside, but gotta go with that curry. I love the pairing of the fried meat with the curry. This is the kind of curry that I just love. It's rich, it's got a nice amount of that coconut milk in there, but it's got that nice cumin flavor that I love so much. It's very rich curry. I can just drink this curry by itself. So I got mine with Huey Tiao noodles, and of course there's Taugi here. Wow, that looks really good. That crispy pork, curry sauce, and the richness and creaminess of the noodle. Oh, it's perfect in my mouth. Finally here, the infamous nasi ganja. 
everyone keep telling us that whenever you get to Ipo, you gotta try this. It's really good. It's ganja for a reason. So finally here, this is our third account. First time they ran out of food. The second time there was an extreme kilometer long line. Now it's just a few miles. So we're getting three of fours because we're starving. Greg is about to tell you everything we got. So the nasi ganja is one of the most iconic dishes here in Ipoh. And what is nasi ganja? I mean, it translates to nasi is rice, ganja is wheat. Why do they say that? Because it's supposed to be very addictive and we'll, we'll be the judge of that. But what the nasi ganja is, is nasi kandar. Nasi kandar is a really popular dish from Penang, a couple hours north of here. And what we have here is the ayam meta, red fried chicken. We just have this really interesting looking sambal here. It's orange. I've never seen a sambal this color before. See a potato here, this telur masin, the salted egg. We have the lady finger, aka okra. And we have sliced cucumber over the rice. He asked we want spicy, of course we said yes. So it looks like they have like a red gravy and more of like a brownish, yellowish kind of gravy here too. And this stall is actually located in a kopitiam. It's called uh, Young Suan, so it's right here in Ipo. And this place is bumping all the time. Come here early, we can't stress it enough. But without further ado, let's get in here. I'm gonna try the chicken first. The ayam meta. Mm. This fried chicken already has so much flavor. You can even see that the spices have penetrated into the meat. It's the outside. It's not too crispy. It's got a little crisp on the outside, but the meat is just so juicy. It's spicy. It's got a lot of flavor on its own. That's before we even mix it in with all sambal and the gravy. Oh, wow, the ayam meta is delicious. You can already smell this chutney. It smells incredible. I already smell some mint. Let's give it a try by itself. Wow. That's coconut and mint, oh my god. This might be the ganja part. <laughs> I could eat a lot of this. Further ado, gonna mix it all up. Got it all mixed together. It's going for the mega bite. Mmm, same. The flavor explosion from all the curries on here. Then you add in that already flavorful fried chicken. You get that nice minty coconut sambal to really cut through a little bit, cut through some of that richness. It's a nice refreshing flavor. You add some of that salted egg for a little saltiness in there. It's an incredible dish, I can see why. And just like ganja, if you have too much of it, I can imagine I can just go to sleep right afterwards. <laughs> To cool us off, we're at D City Corner Portendo. It's a family-owned business, and he is a second generation doing it. His dad started it, and now he's taking the business. This chandol is calling my name. Every time we pass by here, especially on the weekend, there's always a long line. So today is Tuesday. This is actually the fourth time I've been here. I've been strolling around a lot. I can't resist it. We're just down the street. Like Jimmy said, this chandol is incredible. What makes it really special is the sugar syrup, as well as Malacca and 22 other ingredients. See, there's 23 ingredients in this syrup, which is incredible. He has that. What we got here is called the PJK. It has all the ingredients the pulut, the sticky rice, the jagong, the corn, and the kachang, the red bean. It's all together. That's all we got to do it here. Go hard to go. The ice is chopped up. And finally, it's a beautiful combination of the santan and the brown sugar. I can't tell it anymore. I just got to take it back. The sugar syrup is just incredible. You can taste just the quality of it. It's got a nice caramelized taste. It melts just beautifully with the santan, with the coconut milk. Like, it's really a match, a perfect match, these two. It gets that really nice tan color. Mm. It's a nice blend of ingredients here. So you have your green chendol noodles made with the pandan. Nice and soft. Very slight chew. And you got, what I love here is the sticky rice. This has been soaking in this combination. Just gonna take a big bite of it. Mm. First time ever trying sticky rice and chendol was from here, and I think I'm hooked. <laughs> I think anytime it's gonna be on a menu, I have to get it now, it's just so good. 
And you have this big clump of the jagong, the corn. <coughs> Very creamy. I has a slight bit of saltiness in here too. It's just a sweet, salty combination, but even with the sweetness, it's not too sweet. That's why you can eat a few bowls of this without feeling so heavy. This is a legendary stall right here. It's been in business for 25 years, and let's hope it's gonna be in business for hundreds more years. That's how good it is. Very special place. Can't stress enough, not only is this chendol delicious, it's really some of the best I've had, but the family here is really friendly. Some of the nicest people you're gonna meet. You come for the chendol, you stay for the hospitality. It's really special. And we even spoke to the owner, he said, that uh, you know, people have asked him, oh, why don't you have other varieties? Like, no, we want to stick to the classics. And you can tell, like, he's going home right now with fresh pandan leaves to make the chendol noodles for tomorrow. They stick to the, just doing what they know really well and just doing it for successfully, just doing it just this way. It's the quality, it shows. This is my sixth bowl of chendol here in a week. And I can eat another 10 bowls of this in a week. That's how good it is. We are at Yam Taogi Cohen Street. Wow, look at this spread right here. We got liver, we got chicken, the noodles, chicken feet, and Ipo's most famous tauge. Mm, can't wait to eat it. We had a first bite of it by us at the very famous Luang uh, Taogi Ayam. This spot, Cohen Street, is notorious, so they they're known as one of the best Tagi Ayam. So Tagi is uh, bean sprouts and chicken Ayam in all of Ipo. And why so notorious? Not even a guarantee that they'll be open when you show up. We're very fortunate to be here right now. signature dish here at Ipo is the Taugi Ayam, the bean sprout chicken. The reason why the bean sprouts are so well known here is that it's mostly because of the mineral content in the water. There's something with the water here that makes these bean sprouts so nice and juicy. And like Jumi said, we went to Lu Wang last night for the first time to get a baseline. Now we're gonna try this out. I'm gonna go in and try this chicken first. It's very silky, soft. Take a bite. Mm. Chicken is just a perfectly silky, soft, smooth, Really nice. So this is very similar to like Hainanese chicken. Similar preparation of cooking. They boil it, then they throw it in cold water to lock in the juices. Oh. Now we're gonna go for these lovely bean sprouts. So nice and juicy, really refreshing, crunchy, and they're in the, that same kind of soy sauce. There's also a little bit of uh, white pepper in here too, gives it a slight kick. Really nice. This whole package is, you can definitely see why this is known as one of the best I am Taugi here in Ipo. A chicken alone. So perfectly cooked. This is definitely more of like a simpler dish as far as flavor wise. It's not aggressive flavors, but I really appreciate that because the quality of the chicken, the quality of the bean sprouts, you have just a little bit of that flavor from the soy sauce, nice textures. You could tell there's a lot of delicate work that goes into preparing the chicken the way it is because this is some of the best silky chicken I've ever had. And it goes up right up there with like the chicken rice we had in Singapore. It's really, really nice, silky, tasty. Not gamey at all, not tough. It's so smooth and tender. Minutes are young Tao Fu. Yeah, this spot is really interesting. So it's actually called Big Tree Foot. That's what it translates to in English. And that's for a reason. We're actually at the foot of some big trees in here. It's really cool. It feels like we're in the middle of the wilderness in the middle of the city. We're actually 10 minutes outside or so of the city center. And this place specialized in young tau fu. So young tau fu is all these different fried, either tofu, vegetables, other fritters, stuffed with fish paste. So we got a nice mix here. They have them all laid out there. They're frying them up fresh all day long. This is more of a lunchtime spot and very busy. So we picked out a bunch. We got some uh, green beans with fish paste, okra, pepper, there's a young tofu sheet, like really crispy. Uh, a bunch of other random things, you're not even sure what they are. One looks like a wonton, one's like another tofu puff. Uh, we, just, we just got a mix here. Now I'm gonna try out some of the young tofu. Try out this eggplant. 
Mmm. The eggplant's a really good young tofu. You know it's fried, the outside's not crispy. You tell it's still a soft skin of the eggplant. And you have uh, inside, it's actually the layer of the fish paste. Really nice. That reminds me of a little bit of a kettle pork liqueur in Serengano, like the fish sausage. It has a similar taste. Uh, chili pepper with this big chunk. This actually also looks like we had in Terengganu. The nasi kerab with a sorok lada. The pepper with the fish inside. This one does not look like it has coconut in it. It just looks like a classic fish paste. Mmm. It goes really well with the spicy pepper. I'll try this really crispy one here. Mmm. Whoa. This one's really good. It has kind of a, a porky taste to it. I'm not sure if there's any pork in here that was made with it, but it's really crispy. If you saw our Malaysia food in New York City video, we'll put a card up here for that. We actually had Young Sao Fu with curry mee. It's kind of interesting how we brought it all together here in Ipo. All right, so we got this bowl of curry mee too. I'm really curious about it. Oh, it smells so good. Mmm. Uh, got a little bit of a kick to it. Definitely more heavy on the santan, the coconut milk. But it's still quite rich with the curry flavor. Never recommend getting the curry meat with the young tofu. Okay, it brings us all back to our New York experience. We first had this combination together. We're having it right here at Ipo. It's good stuff.